Okay, hello and greetings from Seattle, Washington to everybody out there on the West Coast and East Coast. Uh, good evening and good afternoon to folks. So uh, just to get things started here, you are tuned in to uh, Facing the Future's webinar, Reading into Action, textbook, Textbooks and Lessons to Engage Students with Global Sustainability. Uh, we'll get started in just a minute here as it looks like folks are still slowly joining us. Uh, there's a little bit of information up there on the screen for you. Uh, if you're having technical difficulties, you can call that number at the bottom of your screen. And if you want to listen over your phone rather than through the speakers or headphones in your computer, uh, you can call the number that you were given in the email that you got when you logged in. Um, just a couple notes. Uh, if you want to get a copy of the slides that we're using today, please email me at the end of the presentation, and I can email those to you individually. Uh, it's just Dave at facethefuture.org, and you'll get that information at the end. Uh, also, uh, a link to the recording of the webinar can be found on the professional developments page on our website, and you'll get more information about how to access that as well if you want to share that with others or you want to go back and hear it again for some reason. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, that disembodied voice that you hear on the screen is me, Dave Wilton. I am the uh, Assistant Outreach Director here at Face in the Future, and uh, we're based on the West Coast in Seattle, Washington. And I'd like to thank you for joining us, uh, taking the time out of your day to learn a little bit more about our curriculum resources, and hopefully you'll find this useful and something you can use in your school or district or classroom. So uh, a couple things, you may hear uh, traffic noises, weather noises, or even perhaps at the moment music in the background. Uh, we are uh, on a relatively busy street here in downtown Seattle in an old building, so uh, noise travels easily through our space. So I apologize for the noise, but hopefully if you can hear that music as well as I can, it uh, is nice background music for you all. Um, everyone who's attending today uh, will uh, get a, their choice of either of the two textbooks that we'll be talking about, and uh, you'll get more information again at the end of the presentation about how to access that and how to get those shipped to you. Um, during the course of the presentation, if you have questions, uh, you can type them into the question box on the right-hand side of your screen, and I'll give you some more pointers about how to do that in a minute. Uh, some of those questions we may respond to individually, uh, directly as a chat back to you. Other questions uh, I may answer right on the spot. And uh, others, if they're long or more involved, uh, I'm going to ask you just to be patient, and I will get back to you personally with answers to those questions if I don't have time to get to them today. So I get a list all the questions, so please don't fret if I don't get to you right away. I'll get back to you uh, as soon as I can after the webinar itself today. So uh, now let's quickly talk about uh, how to use GoToWebinar. Uh, up there on your screen, you are going to see in a moment there just a screenshot of what you hopefully are seeing already. Uh, if you don't see the full screen, you can uh, click on that little arrow that I'm pointing to right there, and that'll allow you to enlarge to get the full view that, you're see that you'll see there. And with that, you can uh, type questions in the box at the bottom. Uh, I have everybody's microphones turned off right now, so if you have questions, please either type them in at the bottom, or uh, you can email them to me afterwards as well. And like I said, an archived copy of this will be on our website, and uh, I can also answer any questions uh, afterwards too. So let's keep going. Uh, that's about it for how to use the webinar, and now uh, let's uh, talk just a little about who I am with here. Facingthefuture.org is our website, and you can learn more about us by going there. We are a Seattle-based nonprofit. Uh, we're dedicated to motivating today's students to be responsible stewards of tomorrow's world. And we do that by trying to equip educators, uh, schools, and districts to help students develop critical, critical thinking skills uh, that address global issues, sustainability, and positive solutions. So how do we do that? Uh, we do that by getting resources like the ones we're going to be talking about today uh, to educators and administrators like you all so that you can engage your students in thinking critically about uh, global sustainability and the complex global issues that they will face as uh, citizens and future leaders of the world. So how do we do this? Uh, we do it by offering a supplemental curriculum in ways that can be used by educators in any classroom around the country and around the world. Uh, our resources deal with interconnections between issues like poverty, population, consumption, conflict, climate change. Uh, our curriculum is interdisciplinary. It's used in science, environmental science, social studies, language arts, math, literacy courses all around the world and all around the country. We're used in all 50 states and uh, right now in over 120 countries around the world. In addition to offering introductory webinars like this, uh, Face in the Future has staff that are available to come to your school or district or organization to offer uh, in-service professional development workshops, or we can also do custom-tailored webinars for your organization. And if you're interested in learning more about those, um, you can visit the professional development section of our website, or you can email me, dave at faceinthefuture.org. So before we get started, I want to ask you uh, a couple questions that I would just like you to ponder. Uh, for your own self, and also think about how you could use this as a hook with your own students. 
Um, the two things we're going to talk about first, though, is the what we're going to be talking about. And that is uh, our teacher's lesson plan book, which is called Engaging Students Through Global Issues. And then our student textbooks, which are called It's All Connected, and the other one, the green one there, Global Issues and Sustainable Solutions. And those books, uh, the first one, the teacher's lesson plan guide, is a collection of 40 lessons. And we'll talk about what those lessons are in a minute. Uh, it's All Connected is written at the high school level. And it's a series of uh, seven interconnected units that talk about uh, various global issues and their interconnections. And then um, the other one, Global Issues and Sustainable Solutions, is written at the middle school level. And it's essentially the same content and topics as in It's All Connected, but a different reading level. Um, so you'll have a choice of either of those two books, It's All Connected or Global Issues, at the end of the webinar. And to access those, you'll find out how to get those shipped to you. Um, with the reading levels, as you know, those are, by and large, uh, guidelines only. These books are used uh, in anywhere from undergraduate introductory global issues courses to uh, elementary classrooms as well. So it depends on the reading level of your students, depends on the content needs of your class, but these books are written to be uh, anything from the core book for a course to supplemental readings for existing curriculum that you may have. So to those questions I was talking about. That first question there, uh, in 50 years, I think the world will be, is going to pop up. And I'd like you to just ponder that for a minute and think about, if you were going to answer that question for yourself, what three words would you write down? And imagine then if your students are going to be writing down those words, what three words might they think the world would be like 50 years from now? And this is one way of, of framing how we might want to look at the world. And think about what made you pick those three words. It could be something you heard on the news this morning. It could be your general outlook about how you think things are going to be based on what you know about what is happening right now. Now let's take a look and change the question just a little bit. And what you're going to see here is one slight change in the language. In 50 years, I want the world to be. And now think about what three words come to mind now by changing the question. And the idea behind this is just to give you a sense of really what we at Face in the Future here are trying to do. Um, how does changing the question change your answers? And I think by thinking about why we changed our answers really thinks, gets us to the point of what it is we're trying to help our students to do, which is envision the world how they want it to be and provide them with the tools and skills to, to be able to actually create that world and opportunities to do that as students so they can learn from it when they are uh, actual citizens and leaders later on in life. So what makes this engaging? Uh, everybody here has an opinion. We all care about the future because we're all going to be affected by it. And this is what the curriculum resources we're going to talk about today can enable you to do with your students, to engage them where they're at using issues that are of interest and of relevance to them and are probably happening in your own communities as well. So one of the ways that we find to engage students with these issues is by using their own future world and, and sustainability in particular as a way to understand and act. But what does it mean for something to be sustainable? So coming up, you're going to see here a definition of sustainability. Uh, this was created uh, not that long ago, if you look at it, 1987. And since we're here to talk about engaging students with global sustainability, I think it's helpful to have a shared definition. So it's by no means the only definition, but I think it's a relatively succinct one. It's one that we tend to use because of that, and it's also Andy, because it was agreed to by a large number of participating UN countries. The definition came from a United Nations Commission document called Our Common Future, which was generated by the, uh, or also known, excuse me, I should say, the Brunton Report, which was published in 1987. So it's probably the most common and well-known definition, but by no means the only definition. Uh, throughout time and history, there are obviously other cultures that have had similar definitions. So the idea itself is not a new one, but the definition, I think, is helpful for all of us to have a common point to talk about. So we have the definition, but what does sustainability itself look like? Well, here's one way that we have to demonstrate that, which is this three-ring Venn diagram that you see there on your screen. And it's a theme that runs through our curriculum, this concept of sustainability. And we think it's a great framework for studying global issues. Uh, so it's worth a little bit of time here to, to talk about how we use it. So sustainability is concerned with the, the balancing the impacts, positive and negative, of those three pillars that you see there, society, economy, and environment, and balancing the impacts of human actions on those three. And the goal of sustainability is to keep those, those three in order, to keep our, environment, our environmental house in order, maintaining a healthy economy, and also creating the kind of society that we want to support individual well-being. So by balancing these areas, we build a foundation for a sustainable community, for a sustainable planet to benefit um, 
everybody and everything living on it. So the sustainability framework can be used to assess the impact of pretty much any decision, product, or activity that, that you may encounter in your life, uh, purchase, or use, or, or take advantage of. Um, and you can use this as a tool also to evaluate whether an action or a product will uh, help people in the future have the same opportunities that they might uh, today. So we've talked about what sustainability can look like, but uh, let's talk about uh, how the global and global sustainability also factors into this picture. So one of the things that we like to use at Facing the Future is uh, this global issues mobile. And we use that to illustrate uh, kind of the, the scope of what we cover for global issues. So as you can see, there's a variety of issues hanging there and then the balance. And a change in any one particular issue, as you know about mobiles, can ripple throughout the entire mobile or through the entire global system. Uh, this can easily be seen as a negative feedback cycle, as problems with one issue can bump into others. Uh, so for example, a conflict in one area of the world uh, could cause people to move to other locations, placing stress in the water, food or employment situation in that new area. Um, case in point would be the news these days about what's happening in Libya and the pressure on their borders by people trying to leave uh, that country for Tunisia or, or Egypt uh, for safety and, and freedom. So this can also be seen, though, I think as an opportunity for positive results because if we can find ways to help people, to help organizations, to help countries uh, and their communities and their governments reduce conflicts, reduce the need for migration, uh, resource conflicts then may be reduced. So and that's really what we're trying to emphasize here is the positive aspects of this feedback loop, that a positive change in one issue can ripple throughout the system and then have positive impacts on other issues as well. So let's take a look at a resource that we have that can be easily used to engage students with global sustainability. And while we take a look at that, I have a poll here I want to get a sense of, of who is with us here today. So up on your screen, I'm going to be sharing a poll with you. Just tell me uh, what's the primary grade level that you work with, please. And it looks like folks are chiming in here. And I'm going to leave it open for just a little bit longer. Uh, thanks, everybody, for telling us a little bit about yourselves. OK, looks like everybody's done. So I'm going to close that out and give you a chance to see uh, where we're all coming from here. So it looks like uh, we've got a fair amount of folks uh, teaching in grades 9 through 12 at the high school level and also a fairly large contingent uh, at the college or university level. Uh, so thanks to everybody for joining us here today. Um, so that gives us one snapshot of who's in the room, so to speak, and who's going to be interested in using this. So I want to kind of talk about how you can use this for your various grade levels that you're going to be working in. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about next is the teacher's guide I mentioned earlier called Engaging Students Through Global Issues. And this uh, is a teacher's guide that can be used in conjunction with the two student textbooks that I was talking about. Um, all the Facing the Future activities that I'm going to talk about today in the workshop can be downloaded for free from our website, facingthefuture.org. And uh, from this text, for, excuse me, from this uh, lesson guide, you can download over half of the 40 lessons for free. So each lesson includes everything you need from start to finish, including you know the subject area it's most appropriate for, because there'll be often interdisciplinary lessons, uh, standards consistency with national standards, uh, their assessment questions, extension activities and service learning and action projects, as well as related readings and resources you can use for, for further research or extended learning. Um, all the lessons in this uh, lesson plan book have been reviewed and field tested by content experts, teachers, and students. So uh, we feel pretty confident that they are, they've been successfully used, and we hope that you'll have a chance to use them as well. So there's a broad range of issues that we cover in these lesson plans, and so there's kind of the broad headings that the, the lesson plans fall under. And like I said, half, more than half of these lessons can be downloaded from our website. And I'll share with you in a little bit about how it is that you can do that. So now I'd like to give you a brief demonstration of one of the lessons that you could use as an engaging hook at the beginning of a unit of study or uh, all the way to the basis for a much deeper student exploration. And we're going to do it by going shopping. So up on your screen there, you see some red apples and some green apples. 
And we've looked at the definition of sustainability, so how do we go about determining if something is sustainable in our daily lives? So the activity I'm going to share with you, it's, is it sustainable, is from the teacher's lesson plan book, Engaging Students Through Global Issues. And it provides a kind of a metric or a way of thinking about a decision and determining if it is sustainable or not using those three rings of the Venn diagram of society, economy, and environment. So let's imagine that you're trying to decide between these two types of apples in the produce aisle at your grocery store. And your choices are between apple A and apple B. And I'm going to give you six pieces of information along the way. And I want you to just in the back of your head keep in mind which apple you might want to buy. And at the end, we're going to ask you to decide which apple overall you want to buy based on the inf information you have because you feel it's the most sustainable. So here's your first piece of information. Uh, apple A is going to cost you a dollar, and Apple B is going to cost you 50 cents. So take a minute and think, are you price conscious or not? And here comes your next piece of information. The profit for the farmer is pretty much 50% for each of those, but there's obviously a difference in the, the actual value for each apple. Next piece of information is how far that apple traveled to get to you. Uh, apple A came from 10,000 miles away, and Apple B was much closer to home. So if you're concerned about uh, maybe transportation impacts, carbon footprint, things like that, this might be of concern for you. Next piece of information is let's take a look at the pesticides that may or may not have been used on these apples. So Apple A, there were no pesticides used. Apple B, there were some used. You don't know which ones. Next to last piece of information here kind of goes along with the pesticide use is the soil quality. And the last piece of information for you to decide there is the taste. So what I'd like to do now is get a sense of which apple would you want to buy based on the information that you have there, apple A or apple B. Remember apple A was the red apple, cost a dollar. Apple B was the green apple, cost 50 cents. <laughs> and it looks like we're getting close to pretty evenly split here. I'm going to leave it open for a few more minutes so everybody can vote. And it looks like everybody's voted that's going to vote. Oh, one more person sneaked in there. So I'm going to go ahead and share this with you all so you can see what everybody else decided to do. And it looks like there was a slight tilt towards Apple B, which was the 50-cent apple that came from 200 miles away. Uh, apple A was in a close second. Uh, that was the $1 apple that came from 10,000 miles away. So there's lots of different reasons that you may have decided to buy one apple or the other. And I would ask you now to stop and think about which apple would be most sustainable to you and why. With that information that you have there, would you want other information? Would that be more helpful to you in determining the sustainability of apples? And do you think people should be given more information to help us make informed decisions about what to consume or for anything else or what decisions we're going to make? So this is just one example of how this, this lesson could be used, a very brief introduction. Um, there's certainly variations on this. You could have a whole student assignment built around this where they could go out and, and do some actual investigation about these apples and find out uh, what they're really having the options to purchase in your own community. Going along with the lesson then, I'm going to show you next uh, is a, a rather big rundown of some of the questions that can be used. And these are all contained in the lesson itself, so don't worry about trying to read these here. But you can see the idea behind this is that there's a whole set of questions that you could be asking yourself or your students could be asking each other about whether or not they think this is sustainable. So this framework can be used to assess the impact of any product or activity in, in each of these areas uh, in relation to each of the principles or the, the standards of sustainability. So the assessment reveals how the action or item uh, impacts the economy, the environment, and society in either a negative, positive, or neutral ways. And this can help us evaluate whether the item will allow people in the future to have the same opportunities as we all have today. So thinking long term, the apple you buy today is going to maybe influence long term what kind of apples are grown in the future and what that means for the future sustainability of, of consumption in the U.S. The other thing that I want to share with you is that each of the lessons that we talk about uh, from that lesson plan book are correlated to uh, all 50 states' education standards. And we've developed a tool from our, uh, on, our, on our website that allows educators in the U.S. to look up any particular lesson or teaching resource that we have on our website and find out what 
uh, standards it correlates to in your particular state. So what I'd like to show you here is briefly how to use that piece. And I'm going to show you uh, our home page here, faceinthefuture.org. And as that comes up on your screen, the way you can access this standards correlation is through um, our curriculum page. And if you look, I'm going to hit the educational standards link there on the home page under curriculum. And that's going to take us to our standards alignment tool. And the book that we were using from is the one that we talked about earlier. It's called Engaging Students Through Global Issues. So I'm going to scroll down and click on that one. And then we're going to pull that up. And the lesson that we did was called It's All Sustainable, or Is It Sustainable? And as that comes up, I'm going to scroll down to find Is It Sustainable? And you'll see that scroll down in a minute there. And I'm going to click on View Standards. And I noticed that when people registered, there were a fair amount of folks from Florida here. So I'm going to pull up Florida Standards just to give you an example of what this tool looks like. And so you'll see there it pulls up starting in grade 7. We have standards correlations for the lesson that we just talked about. Is it sustainable? Those are the uh, grade 7 Florida science correlations there. And just quickly scrolling down, you'll see we have social studies. And this will go all the way down to grade 12. So one of the things I'm curious about is to hear from you all um, another question here, which is how important um, is it that your lessons are correlated to your state's education standards? So go ahead and take a minute and vote on that, and let's see how important this is for people in their various jobs. And certainly depending upon what level you're teaching at, what kind of school you teach in, whether it's a public school or an independent school, if you're at a university, it may or may not be important to you to have your lessons correlated to your state's education standards. So it looks like it's kind of all across the board here, but most people say it's either very important or somewhat important. So I'll give you a snapshot here of what that looks like. There we go. So most folks did not think it was unimportant. Uh, so I appreciate you sharing your feedback on that. It's always helpful for us to know. And uh, we hope that you will find this tool useful to use uh, in your own curriculum planning as well. OK, so that's our standards correlation. I'd like to now go back oops, and show you our next slide. And we're going to change gears a little bit, and we're going to talk about uh, the first student textbook, It's All Connected. And that textbook, uh, you can see up there, is a snapshot of the, of the cover. And It's All Connected uh, combines information and concepts uh, and inspiring real-world examples into one whole textbook. It's about 140 pages long. Um, it's broken, again, like I said, into seven different units, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Each unit begins with an introductory chapter uh, that frames the scope and the sequence and the purpose of each unit. And uh, the introductory chapter includes basic essential questions on the issues and concepts that are explored in the unit. Uh, each one also has a relevant, what we call a story from the world, uh, to connect real people or happenings uh, to what the students are reading about. And also a section that we call Youth in Action, which features uh, highlights uh, about what youth are doing around the issues they're taking action on, uh, that they're reading about. Uh, subsequent chapters within each unit address specific global issues and include definitions and concepts and challenges and sustainable solutions. So kind of a whole host of ways for students to understand these issues. The uh, important terms or you know vocabulary terms are highlighted in bold print, and there's a glossary at the end of the book. Um, also, there are connections to personal and structural solutions, so individual actions and dealing with underlying causes of problems that require action by people or governments or communities. Uh, alongside the main portion of the text, there are numerous features, such as the ones we talked about with the youth in action, the stories in the world. Uh, additionally, there are the essential questions at the beginning. There are also uh, questions and curriculum connections at the end of each unit that tie into lessons from the Engaging Students Through Global Issues uh, Teacher's Guide. Um, each unit also concludes with a section of about further information that you or your students can go to to read more. And uh, the book is completely referenced. So there are endnotes at the end of the book where you can go or your students can go to find out where the information that's contained in there came from. So it's a completely referenced and sourced book, which we think is an important resource for you to have. So coming up on your screen next, you're going to see 
um, all of the different units that are covered in It's All Connected. And it provides a thorough overview uh, of a whole range of global issues as well as in-depth explorations of the particular topics and solutions around these issues. So each unit is thematically based, as you can see. Uh, unit one that we'll talk about briefly includes an introduction to global issues and the concept of sustainability as well as definitions of those concepts. And then units two through six address uh, specific global issues such as food, water, forests, oceans, poverty, culture, education, health, and conflict. And those also all tie into lessons uh, that you can get from our website. Uh, the book concludes with a final unit on ideas and tools for addressing these global issues, including activities for students to study a particular global issue or region. Uh, the units can be read separately, sequentially, or in any order to fit a particular need that you may have. So some people will use this uh, as an entire basis for a course, as will pull out particular readings or units uh, as they fit with the existing curriculum or course of study that you're using as a, as a supplement. So what you see there is what uh, the beginning of Unit 1 looks like. And so you get a sense of what's, what the essential questions are we're going to be asking for Unit 1. Um, and we're going to kind of step through and give you some, uh, some pictures of what the book's features are. So we talked about stories from the world. You see there, for example, a story about uh, Brazil's uh, Zero Hunger program that was launched in the, the early 2000s and uh, is still ongoing now. So that's an example of a, a real-world solution to the issue of, of poverty and hunger and access to, to food that and gives students an example of how it was addressed in one country. Uh, also, the youth in action sections that we talked about. Uh, this particular one you're looking at there is uh, actually about another Seattle-based group uh, called Global Visionaries that um, works with having students make uh, local connections to global issues. So, for example, students in global, with Global Visionaries, uh, they go to Guatemala every summer and in preparation for the trip, students will look at uh, their own ecological footprint and then compare that to uh, the ecological footprint of the average Guatemalan and they're able to see that uh, there's a big difference in those and have a better understanding of why those footprints are so different. And again, these examples are throughout the book, and there are references and, and links to the, the groups and the, the stories that are highlighted in each one. Um, also, we have featured global issues. So for example, water is a global issue, looking at the Nile River and how water is a, is a trans-border resource and one that's essentially shared by everybody. So there's a free lesson from our website called Every Drop Counts that can also be used to illustrate freshwater scarcity and the importance of managing this precious resource, so we have a real-world issue of how this has been done and a, a curriculum tie-in for students to experience the importance of fresh water uh, through a lesson plan on our website. Uh, the other thing we talked about were the uh, personal and structural solution highlights, and here you have one that deals with uh, providing cell phone access for people, uh, with the idea being that if more people have access to cell phones because they don't have access to computers, it's a cheap way for people to get access to the Internet. Um, examples of this are farmers in other parts of the world that otherwise may be without uh, crop pricing or sales information for the crops they grow can now access this data using text messaging updates or internet access where available via their cell phones. So they're given real world market pricing that they didn't have otherwise and allows them to get a better price for their crop and hopefully more return on their investment and better return for their whole community. Uh, lastly, we have these other curriculum connections to uh, other things that you may be doing in your own classroom or that you're doing interdisciplinarily with somebody else from a different department. Um, so in addition to the economic connection that you see here, talking about uh, taxation, there are other illustrated issues such as literature, science, technology, and math. So we have some of those STEM tie-ins as well throughout the book. And again, these also link to uh, lessons that are in the Engaging Students Through Global Issues uh, on our website. So we can see how the units are structured. Uh, you have a sense there of what's at the end of the unit for uh, lessons that tie into the reading itself and places to go for further information for either you or your students. What I'd like to do now is share with you uh, an example of how It's All Connected is being used, uh, in this case, in a high school course. And this uh, example is from uh, teacher Rick Malmstrom, who's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, Rick teaches a high school social studies course called Global Issues and Sustainable Solutions. And uh, the course uh, is intended to introduce students to the, the broad range of contemporary global issues with the idea that global literacy or global competency is, is an essential skill, uh, just like being technically competent these days is. is an, so it's an essential skill in an increasingly interconnected world. 
Uh, the course is designed to inform and to provoke and to encourage students to really think about the pressing economic, political, social, and environmental concerns in the world today. Um, students are asked to consider their own responses to these issues and explore examples of people and institutions and organizations that have made positive or negative a difference in these issues. Um, the course was originally uh, designed to be a course for juniors and seniors, and it's since been switched to make it a course for incoming freshmen. And the reason behind that was they really felt it was uh, an important way to engage students early on with these issues to really frame their thinking for their whole high school career. And uh, the course is structured around using It's All Connected as the uh, kind of the, the textbook around which students are first introduced to these issues and then given a chance to explore it using It's All Connected. And then they use the Millennium Development Goals as kind of a centerpiece for exploring issues around the course. So for example, they'll start big with looking at the idea of what is poverty all about, and then they'll narrow that down, their focus to their own community, and talk about how is poverty reflected in their own community, which then also provides opportunities for student service learning projects around the, the issue of poverty in their own community or poverty abroad as well. So again, that's an example from uh, a high school teacher. There are other examples on our website. I'll talk about how you can explore those classroom examples uh, towards the end of the webinar. I'm going to shift gears here and now take a look at the other textbook, Global Issues and Sustainable Solutions. And as with it's all connected, while we say that they're written for you know high school or middle school levels respectively, uh, these books are used all across the spectrum. So from undergrad courses uh, at university level to gifted programs in the elementary school. And as you know, it depends on the, the content needs of your course and the reading level of your students. So you have your choice of, of books here to, to suit your needs and your students' needs. Um, Global Issues and Sustainable Solutions, again, is written for a middle school level. It uh, is more like 50 pages long. And you can see up there is the, the table of contents, essentially, of what's covered in the thematically based uh, chapters there. So we think that this is a good resource to make connections because finding these resources, especially in middle school, can be a challenge. Uh, the textbook can be used as a way to inform and inspire and hopefully motivate students. Uh, it's, we think it's a good resource for teaching core subjects and also a good resource for, using, for being used as a supplemental curriculum and anything from a, an environmental studies course to using as supplemental readings in, in literacy or in social studies or geography. Uh, so looking at the chapters there, it starts off with chapter one of the general heading of sustainability. So in this chapter, students are introduced to the concept, much like we talked about earlier in the webinar itself. Uh, chapter two talks about what's up with population, as it says, and it exposes students to the concept of population growth and the related topics such as sanitation, climate change, and poverty, and how those two, or how all those are related. Uh, the third one looks at population throughout history. So students look at the idea of exponential population growth and how modern advances have made this growth popular and what that might portend uh, for the future if population growth continues. Uh, chapter four looks at the idea of, of caring capacity and students look at those connections between caring capacity and ecological footprint. Uh, chapter five talks about broad global trends in food, water, and income, looking at key issues in resource consumption and availability of resources like food and water and also income itself and how that Im impacts people around the world. Chapter six, the heading of environmental sustainability, uh, looks at how our expanding population and ecological footprints uh, can be contributing to environmental degradation of the planet. And chapter seven, uh, people on the planet, uh, looking, it's called What is the Good Life? And students are exploring how health and well-being uh, are really connected to the health and well-being of the planet. And the last two chapters there, uh, chapter eight, looks at the average U.S. ecological footprint and also as traditional and, and alternative indicators of human progress and uh, looking at current government policies and how those are all interrelated in the U.S. And the final chapter there uh, is really focused on providing students with opportunities to identify personal actions and global solutions that they can take uh, in working towards a sustainable future. So going back to thinking about how they want their future to be in 50 years from now. Uh, just as in It's All Connected, there are uh, connections to other, uh, other topics. And so what you see there is one called You Do the Math. And throughout the book, there are other tie-ins in these content areas. This one in particular is looking at um, population compared to gross national income and, and essentially who has the population and, and who has the money and, and what's the difference and, and why might that be and what does that possibly portend for the future. 
The other thing that we uh, wanted to do in Global Issues and Sustainable Solutions in the middle school textbook was to make these concepts meaningful using um, examples of youth from around the world. So what you see there is a, essentially an excerpt from the book itself using uh, three different kids from around the world, uh, from India, Kenya, and from the U.S., uh, to use them as examples for illustrating the concept of ecological footprint. So we think by making these a little more concrete examples uh, of youth, it's going to be more engaging for students to read about to make it a more concrete example for them. So I'd like to share with you now an example of how a teacher has used this, this book and the concept of ecological footprint in her own class. And uh, this is from uh, Liza Esser, who was a middle school teacher in Washington, D.C. And she used uh, Global Issues of Sustainable Solutions uh, over the course of four or five months uh, in her units on population, sustainability, and ecological footprints. And as Eliza said, the topics in the book fit well with what she was already was doing. Uh, when she had started teaching her environmental science class, the curriculum was originally based on the local environment, which for her is Chesapeake Bay. And it focused mainly on water and ecology concepts. And the, she really felt like the materials that Face in the Future offered allowed her to broaden the curriculum and give it a more global perspective. And because previously the course wasn't integrated with uh, any of the subjects, but the curriculum that she found with us allowed her to do that. So now she starts by focusing on Chesapeake Bay and then moves on to larger global connections using uh, materials from Face in the Future. So the students in her course, uh, they learn content skills related to environmental science, uh, topics such as carrying capacity, looking at resources and limiting factors, and they also learned about critical thinking and systems thinking and, and understanding these interconnections. And from the social perspective, students, students she felt really learned to be more compassionate and gained a, a wider and broader worldview. So in the picture you see there is a diagram of um, sneakers that her students created as part of a lesson from that same teacher's guide engaging students with global issues. The lesson's called uh, Watch Where You Step. And students are asked to uh, think about the resources and processes and impacts that go into making a particular product. And then her students were think has to think about, well, where does it go when you're done using it? So can it be recycled? Is it landfilled? What happens to it? So Watch Where You Step is a lesson from our teacher's guide available on our website that you can download for free and use to explore uh, ecological footprint with your students. For both books, um, we have what we call teacher's companions. And these um, are downloadable tools that you can use uh, to use for as you know, end of the chapter uh, reading question, comp comprehensive questions, or you can use them as uh, writing prompts, or you could use them as a, a formative assessment at the end of a unit of study. So these are available for both books. Um, you can get them from our uh, free curriculum website page on our website. And we'll talk about that in a minute here. So kind of there you see our website. I'm going to go back to our website. I want to give you a chance to see a couple different resources that we have there. And the first one I want to share with you is what's called our Global Issues Tours. And these are a place where you can go to learn more about different global issues with your students. And so coming up on your screen, you should see this in a minute here. So to access the Global Issues Tours from our homepage, you would go to the second heading there, Global Sustainability Resources. And then one step below that, just click on Global Issues Tours. And this will allow you to explore a whole host of issues. Um, there's the broad headings up there of nature and natural resources. We have human health and well-being, where we look at things like equity, human rights, poverty. Uh, there's things about impacts on the planet. where we look at things like climate change, consumption, population and carrying capacity. And the last one there is about government and economy. So many different resources for you to, and your students to explore about these uh, with in-depth readings about each of these global issues. So it's an opportunity for you to learn more. It's an opportunity to send your students to the website to learn more about these issues in addition to what's contained in the textbooks. The other thing I'd like to share with you is uh, how to see how other teachers are using these. And that is about our classroom examples. And from our homepage again, on the, the right-hand column there under four educators, you would look down a little bit and in blue it says educators incorporate our curriculum. And you click on that link. 
and that's going to take you to our classroom examples page. So you could learn, for example, you could read more about uh, Eliza Esser, for example, and how she uses this in her classroom. You could learn, read about how people are using these in their high school classrooms or also beyond uh, K through 12. There's a whole set of things you can read about based upon uh, grade level by subject. And uh, if you'd like to contribute to our classroom examples project, we're always uh, looking to hear more about how people are using these resources in their teaching. And the last thing I'd like to share with you on our website is about extending the learning a little bit beyond uh, through our service learning resources. And this again from our home page uh, is the main page. You would just click on service learning and that's going to take you to the site where you can learn more about that. So we have a whole service learning action database where you can get links to uh, global, national, state level organizations to do service learning projects. We also have a more specific database about climate change service learning projects. Uh, you can learn more about that as well. And we have access to uh, in the bottom there, you'll see our service learning framework, so you can learn more about service learning itself. Okay, so those are just a few of the resources on our website, and it looks like we are getting up to the end of our time together here, as I promised it would be 45 minutes, so I wanted to share with you a little bit of information about us. Again, that's our website, facingthefuture.org. Uh, we send out a newsletter once uh, every two months or so, uh, so it's an op option for you to sign up on the poll that should be sent to at the end here. That's also a way for you to stay in touch with us and find out about new free resources we have and get links to other resources that you might find useful in your teaching. Uh, just briefly about our peer educator program, uh, I'll let you know it's an opportunity for you to share how we're using these, le how you're using Facing the Future lessons in your classroom with other teachers through workshops. Uh, you can learn more about it on our website, but it's an opportunity to go to conferences and other professional development events and have some of your costs underwritten by Face in the Future uh, in exchange for you being able to share about your teaching about global issues and global sustainability. Uh, lastly there, we send out a survey usually once a year, so if you get a survey from us, please do fill it out. It's very helpful for us and is what allowed us to create the resources that we have. And lastly, that's how you can contact me. I'm Dave at facingthefuture.org, so again, if you'd like a copy of the slides, I can send you those. Just please email me at that address. And lastly, how do you get your free book? So after the webinar is done, when you log out of the webinar or close out, uh, you'll be taken to this page. Um, if for some reason you're not, uh, send me an email, and again, I can work with you to get you a free copy. But uh, the survey will appear after you exit the webinar. Uh, we ask that you please provide your preferred shipping address and make sure that it's the correct shipping address. I want to make sure that you get your book. Uh, we're going to mail these books to you via the U.S. Postal Service media mail, so make sure it's an address that can accept postal service deliveries. And uh, please give us four to six weeks to get them all boxed up and sent off to you. Um, your choice, again, is the uh, It's All Connected student textbook for uh, written at the high school level and the Global Issues and Sustainable Solutions textbook written at the middle school level. So I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me today. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to go to our website, contact me through that, or just email me at dave at facingthefuture.org. So thank you very much. Have a good afternoon and a good evening, everyone.